I didn't always know I wanted a family. I thought I, I would always just be happy being a career woman, but that's what I thought. <laughs> and, you know, I, I proudly said to my friends growing up in high school that I was never going to have kids. And they're like, oh, your mind will change. And I was like, no. And then, of course, you yeah. uh, but, uh, but I think why, because um, people, you know, people who, who choose to be childless do wonder, like, why do you want to do that? And for me, my family is just the the best thing in my world, and including my husband, but in my parents, my sister, my niece and nephew. Uh, and so I think it's more of, you know, as selfish as it sounds, it's like an investment in your future. Mm -hmm. uh, because, you know, my mom's now a grandma and uh, to my niece and nephew and, you know, her, her father's gone, her mother has Alzheimer's and, uh, you know, it's just as you age, you know, you, there will be a time when you will be the oldest person mm -hmm. of your family. I, I do want a family and, um, I think my husband would be a great dad. And, um, and I just don't know if, I don't know if it'll be in the cards for me. I, I may never be able to, but I at least want to exhaust all the options to see if it is in the cards. Um, I know I, I also have an uphill battle with a few things. I, of course, I think every woman who has a miscarriage inevitably goes into, you know, their their memory and like, okay, what did I do to cause it, cause mm -hmm. this? What what about my health or what was I too stressed or did I? And I, I really have listed out all the things and maybe some of them are accurate. Maybe it was being too stressed and being a workaholic and and sacrificing my health to make this last film. Uh, you know, a lot of times and, and, uh, or endometriosis runs in my family. My mom, my grandma had it. They had full hysterectomies by, by the time they were 40. What exactly uh, is that endometriosis? I know I've yeah. heard of it. I don't actually know what it is. So uh, yeah. So endometriosis probably is, is a, it's a, I hope I say this correctly. It's, it's a bleeding disorder for women during their menstru menstrual cycle. And it's basically where the, the, Blood, the lining of your uterus also develops on the outside of the uterus. And so you develop these blood clots. Um, and so every, every menstrual cycle you have, it gets worse and worse and worse. And while I was in, in the hospital for my miscarriage, they did find a endometrioma on my left ovary, although that, that wouldn't have caused the miscarriage, but it would, um, it could, uh, make it d more difficult for me to to get pregnant in the future. So, so I have that kind of looming over me as, as telling me that maybe my window is shorter than the average woman. Um, and you know, for some odd reason, I just, I really want to try to do it naturally. I don't want to, and maybe my mind will change eventually or maybe not, but right now I, I just, if I can conceive and have a baby naturally, I want to do it that way. If we can't, then we're definitely open to adoption. Mm -hmm. um, I know there's other options. There's egg freezing and there's IVF and surrogacy and all the other things. But um, so when I when I ask these big life questions, maybe it's the holidays that does that to you. Like, where are you going with your life? Yeah, that's what they always say. If your <laughs> life is great during the holidays, the holidays are great. But if you're going through something during the holidays, it's actually really not going great. Yeah. Time. It's, yeah. a good, it's a good time to reevaluate yeah. your trajectory. And and I just realized that, you know, maybe I have a short window for the ability to have uh, my own child. And um, so I decided, a really, really hard decision, I decided to put that feature documentary that we were developing on the shelf for now. And, um, and what I've actually been pouring my energy and and passion into is working on at this point what I think will be a mini documentary about miscarriage about my experience at least um and the reason I decided that was because there was a period called waiting to miscarry where the doctor tells you you're going to miscarry but it hasn't happened yet and they give you the option of either having what's called a DNC which is an abortion mm. or uh miscarrying naturally, which is basically this kind of home birthing experience. So I decided to try to do it naturally. And they told me if I don't, if I don't 
miscarry naturally, then they'll have to bring me in for a DNC. And, you know, it was really odd kind of learning that that it goes on your medical record as an abortion. I just thought that was kind of weird because it's not like, I always thought of an abortion mm -hmm. as you elect to, you know, you're not ready to be a parent, but this is a case where you really wanted it. And um, so I wanted to miscarry naturally. So they sent me home. They told me uh, they still didn't know where it was. So I was still high risk for ectopic pregnancy of it being in the fallopian tube. So they just told me if you have any, you know, major pain, go to the ER. Um, but so I went home and I had this period of waiting to miscarry. And what I did was I went on YouTube and I wanted to watch every video I could about miscarriage to know what to expect because I basically felt like I was waiting for this massive storm to happen and I had no idea what to mm -hmm. expect. And all I can find, there were a lot of videos, but all I could find was women reflecting on their miscarriage and doing their best with their memory to, to try to describe what it was like, kind of like I'm doing now. And what I couldn't find was a real life documentation of of the journey of the process and um and i knew i had that with all all my video diaries and i've i've been making video diaries since i was i think 18 so you know this is nothing new to me i wasn't planning on making a miscarriage documentary yeah. um by a certain point i knew that i should just follow through and document everything in the case that something could come of this but um so what i hope my mini documentary does is is it's something that women who are waiting to miscarry that they can watch to know what to expect whether it's you know the medical the medical implications the the physical impact and also the emotional experience which is definitely a roller coaster and um and i definitely went through all the stages of grief from anger to bargaining to um uh, denial and uh so, so I've been working on editing that for a little bit, and I don't know what, what's going to come of it. I, th I think it's become something bigger than I initially set out to make. Um, but right now, it's just, it's a passion project that I just need to get out of me, just mm -hmm. like a, a singer or songwriter needs to write that song to, to be able to move on. So I, I know that, you know, probably a lot of my fans or followers from The Red Pill are not going to have any interest in seeing this film, which they probably shouldn't. Mm. I, I unless you're going through it or trying to help someone you know going through it, I don't think you should probably watch it because it's it's gonna be graphic, it's gonna be long. Yeah. Um, you know, it's really raw. And I, I think the reason why I'm kind of willing to let myself be the, the guinea pig for this is because I've already, I've already kind of made my life this very transparent, you know, open for stonings. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, I, I, I don't have a job to protect at this point, you know, or, or a reputation even to protect anymore. Oh, yes, um, <laughs> yes you do. <laughs> well, no, you but know. you've been, you've been dragged through the coals. Is that how the saying goes? You've been there. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And, you know, so I, I just, I feel like I can be riskier because I've already risked a lot and, uh, basically, I have nothing to lose by doing this. I don't. I don't think I have anything to lose, and um, and I do think it will help people. So, so I'm going to release it. We'll see where it goes, but I don't know how long it will take to finish. And um, and then once you know that's that, then we'll move on. My husband and I will. We're going to wait a little while to start trying again because it takes a while to regulate your body. Mm -hmm. And um, and then we'll see. But I, I think I have some more films in me beyond this, so I don't think it's the end for me. But, yeah. yeah. Wow. Well, I mean, thank you for, for sharing that. And I, I mean, I think that that's such a, such a brave thing of you to turn this into an actual film. Hmm. Because that's, it's so vulnerable, it's so painful, and it's something that so many women are going through. I mean, I know that personally, I mean, you know, fortunately not me, but like a lot of my friends are going through or, or have dealt with miscarriages in the last couple of years. You know, I think we're all about the same age and or are dealing with it right now, like more, more than I wish would happen. I mean, I wish none of them were happening, but I think something like this is really, really relevant for our 
generation of women. I mean, any, yeah. any, any woman going through a miscarriage. So, so I think, I think that's really great. And, um, to turn something like so per something so personal and painful into something that I think can help a lot of women. I think like, thank you. Mm. Thank you. I can't yeah. imagine how hard that must be. I, I do agree with you that I think it'll be sadly become more and more relevant. Um, because there, there is a rise in infertility and women are waiting later and later to have children, which I, I actually think is a great thing because, well, I'm, I'm not going to say it black and white like that because I, I think, I don't know, it, there's room for everyone. But, um, but for me personally, having what I do actually view as a successful career in, in documentary filmmaking, which is a really hard space to be successful in. Um, I, it's given me so much confidence to have, um, to have so many supporters and, and people who appreciate the work that I've made and to also be very proud of the work that I've done. And, and so I think, you know, women who want to have a career before having a family, absolutely. Um, I was rereading The Feminine Mystique a couple of weeks ago, Betty Friedan, which was really the book that, you know, kind of launched second wave feminism. And, you know, I, I think there's a lot of, there's a lot of truth in, in that book about how women did feel trapped in their home uh, where they were given this bill of goods that if you have a family and you get married to a good guy and, and have all the amenities and everything mm -hmm. you could want, you will be happy and you'll be, you know, the, have the best life. And then all these women found themselves with everything that they were told would give them happiness and it didn't. And, you know, who knows how much of that era was from things like postpartum depression or, you know, underlying issues mm -hmm. that, uh, that we just didn't really understand that well yet or know kind of how big the scope was. And, uh, but, you know, women did feel trapped in, in their home and with their family and, and didn't feel fulfilled. And so then they were, you know, wanting to look outward and see, well, guys are, you know, working. They have careers and they have respect and they have awards and they have, you know, people giving them lifetime achievement awards. And why can't I be that kind of person? And so, you know, that did really get second wave feminism going and, and wanting to combat stereotypes in the workforce and open opportunities, you know, the glass ceiling sort, sort of thing. And so now we have, you know, we have all these options and now we're kind of, you know, option paralysis, right? With, we don't know which way to go. And yeah. then if we end up somewhere we aren't happy, then we're wondering, well, which path did we take was the wrong way. Um, but, you know, for, for me, I, I think having, a, a, like if I did end my career right now, I am really proud of it. And uh, that that is, I think, giving me the, motivation to start a family. But what we have now that women didn't have during the feminine mystique is basically the world at your fingertips mm -hmm. at home. And you can be an entrepreneur and CEO and never leave your house and, and make a good living. Um, so, you know, I think everything's in flux right now. And definitely for women, I think guys are starting to see things shifting as well now. Um, but I don't know where I was going with that. Um, but well, that's why yeah. I think you, I think, you know, if you're going to make this into a movie, I think that that's so relevant because not just, not just so, you know, other women who are, are dealing with miscarriages can, can have someone to relate to with that, but also in the bigger conversation of women are having children later now. And mm. that means there's going to be more complications. It's going to be harder yeah. for more of us. And that makes that, that that's hard because like you just said, like we're at a point in time where we do, we have more freedom than any women ever in the history of humankind ever, mm. which is such a blessing for us. But also now we have this situation where we're like, okay, but what, how do we juggle that? Mm -hmm. with this other part of us that so many of us still want families. Right. That's very hard. And, and, you know, th this can't ever be said enough, but the, the idea of women having it all has been a horrible lie. Um, 
that, you know, le leads women to that, you know, bewilderment of where to go. How can I, I can't do it all. And, but I want it all. And I'm told I should have it all. And, and you're trying to do it all. And you're frustrated that you're, yeah. you're not having it all. And, and I think what we, we really need to let young women know is whatever life you choose, it will involve sacrifices, you know, for, for me being CEO of Jaybird Productions and running this, you know, this, this film that really, I think people thought was some multi-million dollar production with all these screenings taking place everywhere and people talking about it. No, we, we were just a couple people and, um, you know, we we're trying to do it all. And, and it, it was very taxing on my body and on my health and just stress and, you know, lack of sleep and then, and then oversleep from depression of not being happy mm -hmm. with where things are going and, and never seeing sunlight because you're stuck mm -hmm. editing. And so, um, you know, I, I definitely, the red pill was, you know, now I guess six years of, of sacrifice. Um, and of course, you know, while I was going through the miscarriage, you can't help but wonder like, well, you know, I started the red pill when I was 27. That's the average age of a woman's first pregnancy in the U.S. It's like, I think it's 26 to 29 is around that time. And, uh, you know, so I could have zigged or zagged and I zagged and, but we'll, we'll see where it goes. And if I end up never being able to do it naturally, then we'll go from there. And at least I have found a career that is fulfilling. Um, so, yeah, 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 I mean, well, I mean, again, th thank you for that. I think hopefully like the red pill, it's going to open up the conversation. Yeah. That's, that's really hard to have. Um, yeah. so I think that's really great. Thank you. Yeah. And, you know, I, I, I'm sure some people will be like, well, how, how does this relate to gender politics? It doesn't have to, you know, <laughs> <laughs> uh, having a miscarriage, it's, it's just something, you know, so much is blamed on the patriarchy. <laughs> um, I don't think this can be one of them. And, <laughs> and also, well, maybe, you know, actually a lot of things can be talked around, but, um, I'm but sure you know, there, I, I actually think a lot of gender issues, uh, rather than blaming on the patriarchy, could be blamed on Mother Nature. There's just, there's things about our biology that are very different and we go through different things. And, you know, I, when I was in the process of miscarrying, I, I thought like, I, I cannot heavy lift anything. So when, you know, you're on a plane and someone takes your luggage down from the overhead bin and they're a man and you're a woman, yeah. I'm really grateful for that because you don't know if that person is pregnant or what they're going through. Um, you know, I, God, there was a point when I was in a grocery store and I just bought, I got a contraction and cause you're like contracting and dilating during the pregnant, during the miscarriage. And I just like balled over and dropped the tongs and the Brussels sprouts. Oh. And, oh. and, uh, and so, you know, you just don't know what people are going through. And, and I, I think there are a lot of women who are going through, whether it be, uh, okay, as simple as PMS or, or your menstrual cycle, but then there's you know, menopause and, and then there's miscarriages and, and there's, I mean, there's even things like, um, stillbirth, you know, oh my God, learning about stillbirth, stillbirth mm -hmm. is one of the most, I can't even imagine. Um, I can't imagine. So I think we just all have to be really understanding of each other. And I think right now, um, women's reproductive health is so, because if we want to relate it to gender politics, it's so the thing that's really getting all the attention is abortion mm -hmm. rights. Mm -hmm. um, there's not necessarily any rights to fight for in regards to miscarriage, but I think there is definitely a conversation. Um, so Yeah, and it'll be good to see it coming from like a career-oriented woman. Mm. Because there's, there's a lot of us out there that yeah. don't totally know how to navigate this space. So, so I, th I think that's really, that's, that's really great. I mean, it's, you know, trying to make light of an otherwise really tragic situation. So yeah, good for you. Thank good you. for you. Um, yeah. Well, is there anything else that, that you'd like to get out there about, you know, I mean, really anything that your red pill journey or what you have coming up, just, just anything that you think mm. people should know? Um, God, well, the, hmm. I was going to start trying to, trying to, 
dispel all the myths about the film, but I, I feel like I'm banging my head against the wall with all that. And, you know, if people have heard anything about the film that makes them not want to watch it, go to our website, theredpillmovie.com. There's a dispelling myths section. You don't have to be afraid of what the, the trolls out there online are trying to take down the film about with, the, with lies. Um, but yeah, I just, I, I hope the conversation keeps going about men's issues. And I, I think there's, I think we just need to broaden the scope, you know, and be more inclusive of all people and, and stop, uh, stop excusing, hating on certain groups mm -hmm. by, by calling them the privileged or the, the oppressors and, and be willing to look at victims regardless of their demographic and, um, and look at the problems that we see in a more nuanced way and, and all the factors contributing to that. Um, so yeah, I hope, I hope we can just have more exploration of minds. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. There, there you go. There you go. That's right. Um, well, thank you so much for coming on. Um, amazing conversation. I mean, I don't even think we covered everything that could have been covered to be honest, but um, it, it, like a lot of the conversations we have here, this is a really difficult one to have. Um, so, so thank you for coming on and, and going through all of that. And, um, and also for, for telling us about what you have coming up. Like, we'll definitely stay tuned. You'll have to come back on to talk about that when it's up and running and, you know, whatever we can do to help. Sounds so, good. Thank yeah. you so much for having me on. And I, I love what you guys are doing. And, um, yeah, I, I really appreciate this type of forum to talk at length without, you know, creative editing um, because, you know, these things are nuanced and, and they do take a lot of breath and air time to, to get everything out and, and realize it's not black and white. And, and by saying something doesn't mean so you're saying something horrible. Um, so, yeah, thank you for giving a platform to, to new ideas and new conversations we're trying <laughs> <laughs> well thank you so much we will we'll see you soon i hope yeah that'd be great hey everyone thanks so much for watching the episode if you're interested in contributing to the conversation and supporting the show there's two easy things you can do one click subscribe and two visit our patreon page where you get exclusive access to the exploring minds community